Welcome Good. back to Dark Corners Undead. Welcome back. Stop it's talking been a while. Over me. It's been a while. Yeah. Uh, doesn't seem like a huge while since we did one of these, but it's been a while since we released one. I guess like the closest thing we've actually done was the uh, the live Cheney Q. Yes. So that was a while ago now, I suppose. Yes. So yeah, a bit behind. Time flies. Time flies. On which subject? There are specials in the works. There's the, quite um, a few of them. The long promised India. Yeah, but some of them are actually, you know, <laughs> might might be released at some point. Yeah. The long promised Indiana Jones special is on its way. It's. I'd say it was about seventy-five percent edited now. There you which go. Is pretty good. Yeah, depending on when this goes out, that could be pretty good or it's yes. depressing. <laughs> so uh, yes. And the the F W Murnau special, which was voted on by our Patreon subscribers. Uh, for us to do that that is about started writing that's good yeah there's there's pages of stuff i've done in fairness i've done so, i've done research on that <laughs> i now need to do some more writing on that but it's coming along i think it's going to be an interesting subject also you're almost finished writing the advent calendar for this christmas yes which we won't reveal what it is quite yet no but our advent calendar will be shot soon which means that unless i'm willing to put on a jumper in the blazing heat it's going to be the least festive looking advent <laughs> calendar ever known to man yes well somebody commented on the last one because we sh i think we shot the first we did we, we did it like in, in June and then in September and then in November. Yeah, I, th so. I, think, no, I think we did one in December. Did we? I think we were right up until it December. It was a wire, that one. Um, uh, so I imagine my hair would have been pretty inconsistent. Yes. Well, I need to finish editing the compilation of that. Yes, well. So that's, another, that's another special, Gosh. which is in the editing line, um, <sighs> as is the Vampire Top 10. That's also in the editing yeah, line. Yeah, that was recorded two years ago. Oh, possibly. Yeah. Really? That long ago? Yeah. That's crazy. Oh, Isn't I should it? definitely get my finger out on that one. I should probably rewrite it and do, <laughs> do a better job now. No, I think it's anyway, this has turned into just a little chat between us. <laughs> about uh, what we have. What are we talking about? Would you like to tell us, Graham, about some stuff, something that you've been doing recently for Dark Corners yes. that I wasn't involved with? No, no, kept you out of this one. Um, so we did. Pushed uh, to the outside. Uh, we came up with this idea to start doing a series of short horrors. Yes. Um, and then we want to work with different people who we know on it and stuff like that. So I teamed up with a friend of mine who shoots 360 or is starting to shoot 360 films. So this would be one where you'll put on the headset and you'll watch it. Interesting. Um, it was a good cast. It's a nice script. It's a bit of horror. It's a bit of comedy. Yeah, so that's something that we're working on amongst everything else. Mm. So look forward to that. We are keen to do some some Scripted. actual horror filmmaking of our own, yeah. as it were, or some, just some filmmaking of our own. Do some scripted stuff. Some uh, not that the reviews aren't scripted, but fictional scripted stuff. Oh, you ruined it. people thought you improved your uh, scripts. I impro <laughs> <laughs> giving away the secret. Yeah, no, I, I I just watch the film and this stuff just comes out of me. I'm just, just naturally funny. So it's, it's a one take wonder every time. Yep. Welcome back to my... Uh, all the blooper reveal, reels are just me swearing. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. I don't know why that's funny. I think if you go back to our old channel, there's some blooper reels up. Yeah. I used to, I used to put out takes out, so you can find some... There were a lot more back then. You can then. find some vintage uh, Robin outtakes. <laughs> yeah, became, th th those ones got a lot worse because we had longer takes. Yeah. These days, I just struggle from line to line and just look at my script while the clips are on. Yeah. I was afraid my sister would seduce him with drugs, which would turn him into a killer turkey man. Oh, bloody hell. Anyway, right, we've realised it's a long time since we'd had um, a vote on uh, which films we should be um, fast tracking. So we've got a, a group of four films for you to choose from, which yeah. are largely unconnected. Well, I think you'll find they are all sci-fi films. <laughs> They're all sci-fi films, and if you Apparently. look closely, they might possibly, potentially all come from the same box set. But um, don't dwell on that. But no, but when you read it, remember, these are all sci-fi. This is the these are this all is, this is a box set films. of sci-fi films. <laughs> At least one is very confusing. So, anyway, the films you can vote on are The Bat, 1959, based on a classic stage play. It's kind of an old dark house situation, oh, that sort of thing. Sounds very sci-fi. Yeah, and starring Vincent Price, known for his sci-fi work. Excellent. Um, that is probably the least sci-fi. Yeah. But um, 
That's so uh, that that sounds like a cool That's one. That's got the least interesting title. It's got so. the least interesting title, but it's got Vincent Price. It's the one, on the other hand, it's the one from this group that I read that and think this this may not be a bad film, in fact. <laughs> Despite the box set that it came on. Yeah. Uh, number two, uh, Raiders of Atlantis, which I think we can confidently call a post Indiana Jones. Uh, film. Yes. Probably uh, quite post our special. Was it? Uh, Indiana Jones came out in 82? Uh, no, 81. 81, I think. 81, and this film came out in 83. Yeah. Uh, this is, and we're, we're going, I, I just want to quote the, 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 the description that it gives with the box set here, which is that a Russian su submarine inadvertently restores Atlantis. I, I, I want to watch the film just to find out how you inadvertently restore an underwater city to the surface. Also, I wasn't aware that it was quite so close to Miami. <laughs> yeah, that is odd. Uh, I'm not sure where it's technically supposed to be based. Uh, Santorini is the site usually given for okay. Atlantis. Uh, yeah, number three, Robo Vampire. This one sounds sci-fi. This is this does <laughs> sound sci-fi. It also sounds. It, I mean, to be honest, it doesn't sound like Robo Vampire at all. The the, the the synopsis sounds like Robocop who is chasing vampires. Yeah. Which is not Robo Vampire. Yeah. I'd I'd probably be more inclined to enjoy it if it was um, Robocop versus vampires. I think that would have been a great title. That's 1988. I don't know when Robocop came out, but we can safely say it was pre-1988. Yes. Um, number four, your final one you can vote on is Horror High, which I'm sure I've, I'm sure might have been requested or something, or maybe one like didn't that. Know. It sounds. It's basically Revenge of the Nerd. Yeah. Uh, someone just gets fed up with being bullied, and I think, from the sounds of it, just decides to kill all his classmates. Yeah. Which this, is, may in, this may be in quite poor taste. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I was thinking, yeah, because uh, Revenge of the Nerds is getting bad reputation now for being a bit rapey. Mm. Yeah, well, word? this is 1974, so it may have some similar issues. Oh, OK, we'll find out. Voyeuristic, at, at the very least, you would yes. think. Any high school film made during the 70s, I, I think, know, sort of has of a, a, like a is ligatory. Is it early of 80s that? are probably, probably yeah. worse for that sort of thing. Yeah, but, like um, late 70s, early 80s, I think, is that era. When's Animal House? Because Animal House is like the sort of first one of that. That's early 80s, ilk. isn't it? Yeah. I think, there's a, I think the large problem with it, and this is getting into social issues more than mm. anything else, is that people grew up with this view of college that I suspect colleges in the 70s and 80s were not like that. Yeah. But everybody that watched the films and thought, well, that, that's what I'd like my college experience to be like, and <laughs> yes. then made college like that. Yeah. Or, well, I, th I think... What's, interesting with comedies generally don't seem to age as well as other genres except for silent ones yes which age way better well yeah i think well, maybe well, i was gonna say slapstick is perhaps ages better but i was thinking i don't but then i never Sometimes liked the jim does. carrey like um, mm. ace ventura i was never really a fan of anyway oh i like ace ventura um but uh, but then you think um and there may be multiple reasons, mm. but did, uh, a lot of comedy from the 1930s, verbal comedy, the um, sort of screwball stuff, does age well. Yeah. A lot of the, sort of the Ritz brothers and things like that doesn't. The sillier it gets, not it, it, worse it, it, the worse it ages. On the other hand, Looney Tunes, Warner Brothers cartoons, oh, yeah. age exceptionally yes. well. And that's yes. well, largely most, most of the, Most of them. Okay, some of, them have, <laughs> some of them have some race issues. Um, yeah. But I, I watched one last night that I'd never seen before, and it, it's hilarious. You can have a whole audience yeah. of people um, in, in fits over this stuff, and it's mostly just animals hitting over the, hitting over the head with frying pans. And yeah. Some people think that the reason that slapstick comedy sort of had a dying off in live-action cinema is because cartoons could do it so, so much, much better, better in a right. way and there are few people who are willing to sort of go the whole hog like Buster Keaton and actually take that punishment yeah and there is something funny about what knowing that it's happening about watching somebody actually do it which you can mm. do with animation very easily live action you need special training and bones still get broken yeah and Keaton broke every bone in his body straight a little from the from the general subject but yeah there no, is a thing that that comedies, interesting... comedies don't always age well maybe it's no maybe it's like comedies which are or maybe it's Films that are targeted towards a particular demographic. I think youth films age youth incredibly films. poorly. And yeah. to be honest, 
I think most youth films, because youth films are always being made by people 20 years too old, they were probably bad at the time that young people didn't go and see them. We'd be like, oh, I just want my life to but be But then like what that. about when you take something like The Goonies? Yeah, now, yeah, that hasn't aged so well. Has it not? Has it? I, I, I don't, don't know. I, don't know. I, I like it, I but I don't know if that's nostalgic. Goonies. I need to find like a child to yeah. make them watch my childhood and let me know if it's, and validate it for me. Uh, you know what? <laughs> I think some movies age well, some movies age badly. There's perhaps not a formula to it. Yeah. Does horror age pretty well, doesn't it? It like, depends what you not, mean. I, I mean, mean like the, the cheap nobody ones is, don't. Nobody's going to... If you put an audience that likes Hostel, I mean, that's a different type of horror, yeah. obviously, in front of Frankenstein, you're not going to be scared by it. No, but I, don't, but I think as a storytelling in Frankenstein's very good. Yeah. That ages very well. On the other hand, Dracula was a big success at the time. That hasn't aged particularly well. No. But if you take comedies from the early 30s. Yeah. What ones of those are still kicking around? The Marx Brothers, I think, are consistently popular. Uh, it happened one night as early 30s. Mm. Even the Marx Brothers, I, I don't think, like people know it, but I don't think they would seek it out in the same way as Frankenstein. No, no, I don't think it's, so it's got not... that big of a reputation. Yeah. It happened one night is the only one that's charming. And that's the, like the first screwball comedy. That's mm. when that sort of thing started. But I think there's a lot of theatrical transfers around that time. So yes. there's a lot of stuff coming over and people learning to write dialogue. Uh, oh, Lauren and Hardy, of course. Yeah, I guess. They were making features in the early 30s. But I don't think I even... I mean, I know Lauren and Hardy from the cartoon series more than, really? than their film work. I think that's relatively unusual. I just, can't, like, I just can't... Like, I'm sure I've seen bits, but I've never seen much. Not even shorts? No, like, maybe, but mm. it doesn't resonate. I mean, I don't think that people are running out to buy Laurel and Hardy in the same way that they're running out to buy Frankenstein. I think maybe that just speaks to your taste as much as anything else. I think Laurel and Hardy is probably comparable in terms of popularity with Frankenstein. I don't believe that for a second. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it just depends on the fan base. There's, yeah. a, there's a fan base for Frankenstein, but there's also a fan base for Laurel and Hardy. You know, there's Laurel yeah. and Hardy societies. They continue to be hugely influential yeah. in, the, in their comedy. And I've seen rooms filled, obviously, the, the, the silent films. Yes. But, the, the, uh, the, the, you know, they had a brief silent career beforehand. But either way, mm. you, you can definitely f sell out a cinema with a Laurel and Hardy classic. Yeah. It was interesting. I went to go and see Broken Blossoms. Yeah. Story-wise, very timeless, but there's a lot of inadverted racist stuff in it. Where at the time the film's trying to be incredibly progressive. Yeah. So, you know, it's a you've got interracial relationship in there, but the terminology just throws you out of the film. Like whenever you're yeah. getting invested in it, that will continue to happen. Terminology yeah. evolves like that. You can't. But it, like, it strikes. It, it hits you right from the very beginning of the film where you know it's like oh we're going to see broken blossoms and then it comes up broken blossoms or the yellow, yellow man, man and, and the, the girl, girl. <laughs> and you're like, oops and even in uh, so the chinese man has helped the girl uh, who's being abused by her father and he's like nursed her back to health and she looks up at him oh chinky why are you so kind to me <laughs> and you're like and it's supposed to be like this really touching moment but she just uses this really mm. dated racial slur <laughs> Just how people were and it just at the time. and that's it, and it just rips you right out of that that emotion. Which otherwise, I think the, the yeah. film really great film, groundbreaking techniques yeah. and everything else, and great storytelling. But I suppose there's a question that that's historically accurate, not historically. That's accurate to the time. If you were to yeah. make a film set in that time, you wouldn't use that language. Yeah. That would be inaccurate. Mm. So, where do you land on sort of like? Do you want something to be accurate and not jarring? Yeah. Or inaccurate and. Yeah, I so somebody was there. Yeah, oh, we do like a Q and A at the end, and and he, was, and he was questioning, you know, why they'd show this film when it's got yellow face in it, and it made me think that some of these films you should probably be prepared for what's going into it. Yeah, like not to 
not to spoil belabor it or anything, but just go, this is a film of its time. Like, I kind of assumed that there would be yellow face in it going into it, but the language of it threw me out because I wasn't expecting it. And I think films like that, you perhaps just need, like, a, if you're doing a public screening, just to do, like, a little introduction to say, this is a film of its time, such and such and such. Yeah. I know, this, this guy, when he was questioning it, was like, oh, why would you show it? And I was like, people are still showing Breakfast at Tiffany's, which is far worse <laughs> for Yellow Face. Uh, Besides, you don't change history by ignoring it. Yes. You, yeah, you I know, think you've got to show it in happen. the context and talk about it. Yeah, you yeah. don't brush it under the carpet. And besides, with this, it's a good film. Yeah, it's a victim of its time, but it's a good. But it remains a good film. There are plenty of bad ones with yes. Yellow Face, yeah. which are bad films, and also which are showing Oriental characters in a really horrendous light. Yes, there are plenty of those yeah. from the same era. So I think that Broken Blossom should be celebrated all the more for that. Yeah, because it's actually going against the grain. Yeah. You've got, but yeah, it's also all about context. Yes. You know, I think we forget that we're not a pinnacle of civilization. We're on a continuum. The things yeah. that we make today in 50 years will be equally unacceptable. Yeah. And people will, will, will say you, could, you, you, you shouldn't be showing anything directed by Michael Bay. It's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> His abuse to CGI artists. Well, that too, but in terms of the male oh, gaze, yeah. you don't get Oh, more and the, than yeah, Michael and the, the fact, I mean, what's the, the last Transformers film? You've got the. One of the characters who's uh, fucking the daughter, who's underage, but he's got like a card explaining why it's legal because they're in a relationship. How old are you? 20. This is illegal. She's a minor. We're protected by the Romeo and Juliet laws. We dated for a little while. I was a sophomore and he was a senior. It's fine. No, it's not fine. We've got a pre-existing juvenile foundation relationship. Statute 2705-3. Texas statute? I assume that's not like a plot point. <laughs> no. That's just it's like, this an is... excuse for a fantasy. Yeah. Which is really... It's a very yeah. odd, uh, odd thing to put yeah. into a movie. Uh, yeah, it's hard to know what's going to be the... Yeah. Well, well obviously, you don't know because like things change. Gaze. Because things, things change. it's amazing how much things have changed within our, within, just within our lifetimes. Yeah. You never know what way things are going but to go. The odd one that I saw recently, I went to see uh, Revenge, which is a French... Film and it's a rape and revenge story, not dissimilar from I Spit on Your Grave. The girl's raped and then she ends up killing all the guys. But it's written and directed by a female director, and it's being celebrated as like, oh look at this, it's so empowering. I was like, I don't see a great deal of difference in this than a, a Spit on Your Grave, other than like the rape wasn't on screen, like it's more implied, right. so it doesn't dwell on it. And then in uh, I Spit in Your Grave, she sort of lusts after them in order to get close to them before killing them. So they still play with the sexuality a lot more. But even in Revenge, the whole way through the film, she's pretty much just wearing her underwear. Mm. And it's really cold. So there's, and there's times where she could have got clothes and she doesn't. Uh, so it felt like if you didn't know that it was that's the thing. If it was that it was written and directed by a woman, I don't think you would you would know. And it was so it was weird mm. seeing this film. And you would put it in the same bracket. Yeah, and like even even at the beginning, she plays this. very much on the way that she shoots the lead female is very much through the male gaze because it is the guys gawking at her. But then you therefore you're still yeah. keeping that male gaze which you're trying to get away from. Uh, I'm still, it's an enjoyable film. Yeah. So everybody, in the end, it shouldn't really matter. Everybody makes the film they make and has to be judged yeah. without, without that, that context. I think. Yeah. Uh, but I think yeah, I just found it interesting how much it was being celebrated. Yeah. Uh, when I didn't really find it a million miles away from all the other stuff. And she said that she hadn't based it on those sorts of films. She had seen it more as a Rambo. Right. A female Rambo who's like. You know, she's got out there, she's got to build herself back up. And you can see the parallels in there. But Rambo, you know, he's, when he escapes the police station and he's just got his trousers on, first thing he does once he gets out into the woods is get a potato sack and make himself a coat. <laughs> you know. It's cold. He takes, you know, he takes care of that first. So for this film to not 
to sort of ignore the how cold it is and just have her wandering around in her underwear yeah makes it feel uh, a little bit odd odd choice to make yeah um, okay amazingly we got there from horror high that was, uh, so, <laughs> yeah uh, so vote on those four films that we yes. mentioned uh, 20 odd minutes ago yeah it'll uh, be edited and uh, and uh, yeah is there anything else we need to say I don't know so. but let us know what you want us to talk about in the future yeah give, do, um, give us some suggested subjects because clearly we go off piste quite a lot <laughs> Just, just start talking and uh, see where it ends up. Uh, cool. All right. See you next time.